This Coin Week podcast is brought to you by PCGS. PCGS is kicking off the new year with the release of a new signature label series featuring former U.S. Mint AIP designer Thomas Cleveland. To learn more, visit www.pcgs.com. In this episode of the Coin Week podcast, we talk coin photography with Phil Arnold. If you collect certified coins, you're already likely familiar with Phil's work. He is the pro photog behind the PCGS TrueView, Glamour Shots for Coins. We talked to him about the craft, how he got started, and what factors make up a great coin photo next on the Coin Week Podcast. Hi, Phil. Thanks for joining me on the Coin Week Podcast. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Well, I'm doing great. I wanted to get you on the podcast for a couple of reasons. One of the reasons, in my opinion, being someone that deals with coin photography and artwork every day, is the consistent quality of your work makes you one of the industry's true rock stars. So I wonder, from your point of view, what makes a great coin photo? Well, first, thanks Thanks for the compliment. I don't know if I'm a celebrity or anything like that. I just do my best. You know, it's entirely subjective what uh, makes a great coin photograph. I think it really depends on the desired purpose of the photograph or the individual taste of those consuming the images. Um, I personally come from a fine arts background and graphic design background. So initially, uh, my philosophy was trying to accentuate that little relief part that coins are. They're like little statues. Um, and that was, you know, my goal at first, to make a design a primary focus. Um, so, you know, think of the fields of a coin as sort of negative space. Uh, it's not, it's essential to the design, of course, but it's not a focus. But, uh, you know, as time went on, it became necessary to, you know, photograph coins for essentially what they are, which are little metal discs. You know, what are the properties and characteristics of that metal disc? The patina, how the luster dances off the field, that sort of thing. Uh, so I suppose balancing the art of the coin and the physical properties of the coins are what's the most important factors in making a good coin photograph. So how did you come on board at PCGS? Were you already taking coin photographs as a professional, working for other clients? Or did the position open up and you seize the opportunity and then grew into the position? sort of a long story, really. Um, I'd always been interested in coins since I was, you know, around 12 years old. My grandfather left behind an old shoebox full of, you know, old, worn British pennies, uh, Canadian large cents, uh, Canadian brass cents from the 1940s, uh, Canadian war medals. Did I mention I'm Canadian? Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, after that, um, I sort of fell out with it as a teenager, of course. But, in my early 20s, uh, I started to get back into it. I started purchasing more coins, and as soon as I started living on my own a little bit, I realized I couldn't afford to keep the coins anymore. Uh, so I started imaging coins. You know, at first I used a flatbed scanner to try and sell coins online. Later I got a little point-and-shoot coin. Uh, later I got a little point-and-shoot camera, and I started playing around more and more with that. And I suppose I first um, realized I was on to something was when I was in graphic design school and we were doing these sort of fake, uh, you know, bank uh, bank advertisements. And for the mock-up, I wanted uh, pictures of coins, so I took a picture of a Canadian $2 coin at Toonie. And when I handed it in, the teacher's like, uh, where did you find this image? It's insinuating basically that I might have taken it from somewhere. And I said, no, I took that photo. Uh, and so as time went on, um, some people started to notice, and I started taking pictures of some bullion coins for some dealers. Uh, in exchange for my photography services, they would give me, you know, a Silver Eagle or a Canadian Maple Leaf or a Kookaburra, so I thought that was a good trade. Um, but after I left school, uh, I wasn't having any luck finding graphic design work or illustration work. So I needed to get out of my parents' house, so I moved to Europe. And there, um, I bought some nice art medals and some German coins, and I kept taking photos and selling some stuff 
online. And eventually a collector in Athens, Greece, his name is Dimitri, uh, he said, hey, Phil, come over to Athens, take some photographs of my collection. And so I did that, and with all, you know, the, the portfolio I had, a, I had a, and with all the images that I've, sorry, I'm stumbling over my words. So with that uh, portfolio of images, I put together a little website, and I moved on again. I tried to move to London, England to, you know, try and be a graphic designer, try and be an illustrator. Didn't have much luck in London. I did interview with uh, Spink in London for my photography services, but they were happy with their setup uh, when I interviewed there. So on a total hair, and, so on a total hail mary, uh, I saw a position advertised on the Collectors Universe message board, and I thought, why not? What do I got to lose? Probably not going to get it. So I just sent off my, you know, my website, my resume. Not expecting to hear anything. Two hours later, Ron Guff calls me and says, come to California, have an interview, and the rest is history, basically. You know, Phil, for people out there who are amateur photographers who would like to up their coin photo game, what are some tips that you might have for them? Um, you know, when I first started taking photographs of coins, I just had a little Canon point-and-shoot camera. It's very crude by today's standards, really. Um, but, you know, it produced some good results. I mean, I think the main thing is to experiment uh, with your light sources. You know, don't be afraid to make mistakes. You know, try and use some reflectors or bounce your light source off another light source. And I think one of the most important things is to uh, be welcoming to feedback. I mean, I think that's one of the most important things that helped develop myself as a photographer, even after I started at PCGS, maybe especially after I started at PCGS. What is it about a good coin photograph that makes the image better than a scan? Um, well, that's a pretty easy uh, comparison there. I mean, with the scan, I started out with a scanner myself, um, but the problem with scans is that there's only basically one light source. You can't change that light source at all. It's just coming from one direction and makes the coin look really flat and doesn't doesn't make the image pop in any way. With a DSLR or any sort of camera that you have. I mean, people are starting to use their phones a lot more when it comes to coin photographs as well. But whatever the case, with the camera, you can always play around with the light. And that's the most important bit. Are there particular types of coins that you just dread dealing with because they're difficult to accurately capture in a photograph? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, proof brilliant mercury dimes are kind of a nightmare for me. <laughs> it's just that they're little tiny, tiny, tiny bowls of mirrors, really. And it's really tough to deal with the light when it comes to those coins. Another coin is, you know, a couple years ago, there was the... Uh, the baseball coin, and those were difficult to deal with, but it's nothing compared to what, you know, the Royal Canadian Mint has come out with this year. Uh, they have a Canadian football football coin. It's just a concave, convex, uh, really difficult to deal with with those surfaces. With the light just bounces everywhere. It's hard to make sense of the design. It's just, it's tough. If you like that coin, great. More power to you, but it's just so tough to deal with. Well, you know, as a videographer, I work with less than optimal light at coin shows. And I find that the two coins that are the most difficult for me to get really good, clear, nice representative color on, and this is on a Pro Spec 4K camcorder with a large sensor, are dark copper coins and deeply toned silver. These things just suck up the light. Yeah, it is difficult. I mean, with copper coins, sometimes really dark ones can have sort of, I don't know, so almost reflective patina to it. If you hit the light a certain way, it's just, it takes away all of the chocolatiness and it can look chalky if it's overexposed. And getting the right angle and right softness of light to get that dark surface that looks great is a challenge. So I'm with you there. 
You know, one of the things I think that makes a PCGS CoinFAQ so fascinating and, and such a great destination for collectors is the variety of coin photos. And so obviously this, this is a direct tie-in to what you've been able to contribute, not only to PCGS, but, but to the hobby. My takeaway generally is that if you look at all the coin photos on any given issue and just see how much diversity to look there is, even in generic type coins, it's amazing. Have you ever considered how much of an impact having this type of knowledge out there would have on the market and, and for collectors? No, I had no idea. No. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, one thing I was not really aware of when I took the job is just how passionate U.S. collectors are. Um, you know, I grew up in a you know, medium-sized town. There was not much of a numismatic community. But it just blows my mind how passionate U.S. coin collectors are uh, just when it comes to varieties, different types, different grades. I mean, yeah, just going from my limited experience in the numismatic community to the top of the U.S. market is just... Well, wow. <laughs> but that speaks to the beauty of what you've provided, because a true view of a $50 coin can be every bit as fascinating as a million dollar coin. And the fact that collectors get to admire their coins in this way, in this context, and seeing that there's a, some sort of curated order against others that you've seen, each treated with respect. And the fact that the high resolution photos are many times larger than the coin itself, it just, it just adds to that. Yeah, and I think that goes to sort of my philosophy when it comes to photographing coins. Um, I'm not necessarily taking photographs to for dealers to buy and sell coins, although that's a consideration as well, and I'd like to accommodate them as far as that's concerned as much as I can. But when it comes down to it, I have sort of like a like a collector-oriented approach. I mean, I want to photograph something as I would like to see it if it was my coin in my collection. And I think a sort of validation of that approach is something that happened a couple months ago. Um, we were doing a video shoot with Bruce Moreland, who owns that famous 1794 specimen dollar. Um, we were shooting some film with him, and we were led into a study. Inside that study was a small photo gallery of my photos of his coin. And that's quite an honor right there. And, you know, quite a you know, validation of that collector-oriented approach to taking photos. So price being no consideration, do you have any favorite coins, any magical coins that have come through your queue? You know, there's a dealer uh, named James Ricks. He's in charge of Atlas Numismatics. He has submitted amazingly beautiful art medals. You know, you've got, you know, not only Swiss shooting dollars, but you've got, uh, you know, cathedral medals for, by a, a sculptor named Wiener from the 19th century just beautiful renderings of these European cathedrals. I mean, it, the list goes on and on with his submissions. And I like to put in my artistic approach when it comes to that because they're so diverse, uh, there's so much to see, and they're just beautiful pieces. And, yeah, those are my favorite things to photograph, just weird, esoteric stuff. What is your take on the quality of coin photographs from professional dealers and auction houses? In other words, do you think that the industry truly gets that a coin photo is supposed to invoke desire for the coin? Um, well, I think certainly having clear and accurate photos helps one sell the coin and adds confidence for a potential buyer. Um, but I think it comes down to the dealer really knowing their clientele. I mean, take a legend, for instance. Uh, legend... Laura from Legend has been a terrific supporter of my work for the past seven years, and she has lots of flashy, wonderful proofs that appeal to her collector base. Um, and so, yeah, that's the type of coin she deals with, colorful proofs, and she needs the best uh, photographer, or photographs, rather, uh, that, you know, handle that niche that she's carved into and appeal to that base. I mean, when it comes to photographers, and there's there's myself. I mean, I would encourage lots of dealers to submit as much for me as possible. But there's other 
photographers out there who are readily available to uh, help dealers out um, when it comes to photographing images of their coins for their clientele. Um, what I think dealers need to know is that a good photograph uh, just can just trigger passion inside a collector. Um, I think I mentioned that passion before, but you know, a good photograph can give a potential buyer an enormous amount of pride in their collection and just keep them coming back for more, really. Do you still enjoy taking uh, your camera out and shooting things outside of work? Do you uh, still photograph your own coins? Um, I don't, I'm not really much of a collector myself. Um, it's kind of hard to be a collector uh, when you work at PCGS from a certain perspective because you see such amazing stuff day in, day out. Um, whatever I collect is sort of, um, sort of pales in comparison. So it's hard to keep a focus, numismatically speaking. Um, I like to photograph, you know, landscapes, go to the national parks and take some landscapes out in Utah, uh, Yosemite, those kinds of places. And I've recently gotten into, uh, minerals, you know, you know, crystals and minerals, just using my experience, uh, with macro photography on, you know, little tiny, you know, facets of different minerals, like, uh, yeah, it's just, it's a different world, basically, and I'm just exploring that right now. Well, Phil, I appreciate your time, taking the time out of your busy day and escaping the assembly line to uh, spend some time with us to talk about the craft. I can't wait to see the uh, fantastic coins that you're going to shoot later this year. Well, thank you very much. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Thanks. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your friends. You can download this and every one of Coin Week's podcasts for free from the iTunes store. And if you like it, please leave us a five-star review. It helps our rankings on the iTunes store and also gives us some honest feedback about how you feel about the program. For Coin Week, I'm Editor Charles Morgan signing off. Happy collecting.